Hi, I'm Rory Greener from XR Today, bringing you the latest in news and conversation from the extended reality space. Today we are joined by Tim Van Dam, the General Manager of ChangeFied BV, and Eric Welling, their Lead Software Engineer, to discuss targeted immersive learning solutions for enterprise education and beyond. Tim, Eric, could you introduce us to ChangeFied? And also within that, I'm very interested to learn about ChangeFied's uh, Enterprise Ready, gamified social solution um, could you just uh, in your own words could you break down what that means and what that description uh, offers to clients uh, yes well I'm Tim uh, this is Eric um, we uh, yeah we started in uh, May uh, last year um, been developing a game uh, virtual public transport um, and uh, we'll talk about it a bit later um, but we want to uh, build uh, gamified solutions within the social domain. Um, so uh, with uh, virtual public transport, this was the first game we started uh, four years ago. Uh, I came in contact with someone uh, who wanted to have the uh, process of youngsters to learn to travel by public transport. And these youngsters where uh, people with autism or uh, light uh, mental disability, uh, which they have to uh, practice uh, in a safe space uh, to learn to go by public transport. Um, so in the beginning, there are not a lot of... Um, pickles? Um, sorry, Dutch. <laughs> uh, yeah, distractions. Distractions? Sorry, yeah. They're not, they're not uh, distraction-free um, uh, game. And from there on, um, we, we are building up the distractions uh, for them uh, just to get uh, trained in the, the, the real public transport. Uh, big advantage is that if they train uh, and a, uh, a train or a bus falls out, it will actually happen because uh, in real life uh, that's not always uh, the case. Um, so it's really focused uh, on the social uh, domain. Um, yeah, from there on, we want to make a change uh, in this uh, within the social domain. Fantastic. And you mentioned there some of the use cases that you've built for. Um, yeah. Do you mind going a little bit deeper into those use cases? And I'm also interested specifically uh, what benefit a social a social immersive training brings. Why pick immersive technologies to help develop one's social learning? Why is that a applicable technology? Um, most, most perfect is that they... Um, can uh, yeah, they play it uh, stimuli free um, and um, they can learn it as uh, as much as they want. Um, if they're not able to do it uh, to, to learn it in the first time, they can use it multiple times. Um, that is the best way. We have loads of shortages over uh, here in the Netherlands with uh, the body system. Uh, normally, a body uh, goes along with a youngster with autism. Um, to go by public transport to train them, um, but now in virtual reality they can uh, prepare uh, for this uh, journey. And it feels like that's a specific space, the buddy system yeah. is a specific area where the immersive technology has really filled a, filled a, filled a gap yeah. in terms of solutions, is that fair to say? Yeah, recharge. So <laughs> one uh, additional uh, like benefit to, to uh, to perform this in virtual reality um, is that you really get the, the full uh, experience um, because like every you can um, like the complete package everything that's like can go wrong in public transport everything you uh, might bump into it's all it's all there so in the end you basically experience everything that can go wrong so you know how to handle all of those situations and also what's also very important in our game is that um, you as a player are really in control of the character. So there's no, um, it's not just explanation telling you what to do, but then also you as, as the player are responsible to actually perform those tasks and also remember um, what to do at what point. So these buses and trains in our games, they will, um, they will go whether you are in them or not. And so it's really your task as a player to 
uh, navigate this world like you would in the real world. Fantastic. And within that, it sounds like almost a library of content and then also sort of various levels of interaction, these immersive spaces. Um, could you break down a little bit more, especially with this is obviously quite a targeted solution, um, what benefits are you bringing to the learners, but then also the mentors in these sectors that you cover? Um, and then you also mention, you know, some of these features and some of these uh, s virtual scenarios you can uh, learn in. What are the best ways to measure that? What's the best way to measure that effectiveness? Um, so the, the benefit that we try to bring is the ability to practice as much as you want. So you get rid of the, some of these restrictions. Um, so um, beyond just the, the public transport, we also have a game uh, that teaches students how to assemble a computer, for example. And there, uh, normally they get taught uh, how to do this in, uh, you know, regular lessons and then also some uh, practical bits. And uh, they have quite a few issues with this because it can cost a lot of money uh, and a lot of time from the teachers to be able to, you know, set up all these computers so that these students can work with them and these components can break very quickly. Um, and then they have to find out which component is broken and get a replacement part for that, uh, etc. And so it gets really complicated. And then um, at the end of the line, these students uh, really don't get enough uh, practice with actual computer parts. And so um, doing it like this in, in virtual reality makes it possible to really uh, practice as much as is needed. And um, in regards to your question about uh, like measuring effectiveness, like yes. uh, up to this point, we only have uh, some uh, field results. Um, so uh, students that um, that have played the game, that have um, you know said what they, um, how much they enjoyed it, uh, stuff like that, and then we are also currently um, we do not have um, any research uh, yet on how much it really uh, can help these people, but we are actively working on that. We are finding partners to work with uh, to get a more of a large scale uh, research going uh, to really test uh, the benefits. Fantastic. And um, also within that, you mentioned you will have partners in the future to help measure that effectiveness, but with the learners and clients, uh, if that's the best way to put it, who you have worked with to deploy these solutions. What has that feedback been like? Um, I imagine you've heard some good words and have you learned anything to improve from said feedback? Yeah, from the public transport game, uh, we, we, we have a, a, a lot of uh, positive feedback. Um, this, uh, we're still building up our, uh, our levels uh, with more uh, stimuli in it, uh, different scenarios. Um, but based on the f uh, first levels we build and the people who practice uh, with it, yeah, we got a fairly high percentage of people who uh, are now able to go uh, by public transport. Cool. So that sounds like that's an effective, yeah. um, you know, effective use that has worked in the way it's intended. Yeah, for sure. Fantastic. And. Uh, just to sort of round us off a little bit, uh, I'm interested in learning a little bit more about those government and education sectors that you're working with. You mentioned the public transport yep. uh, example. That's quite a unique um, use case where immersive training solutions can help. So could you speak a little bit more just to close off on your experience of working with those government education sectors? What has that um, conversation been like? And do you feel perhaps there's an increasing interest um, from those sectors to use immersive solutions? Um, yeah, what, what, what we learned in the last uh, year, um, we have loads of stakeholders. Um, we didn't expect that it would be so many stakeholders uh, in this uh, process. Um, we've got uh, three uh, groups uh, who can benefit uh, or are, we can see as a client, which are the, the public transport companies. Um, they uh, have to um, um, fill in one of the so, uh, social development goals, um, which they can do because uh, you, getting these people uh, with autism uh, into public transport makes the world more inclusive. Um, 
but they won't train uh, these people. Um, then we have the government uh, within the Netherlands. Uh, you got special transport uh, for uh, these people. It's around 1.1 billion euros, uh, which goes into this. Um, so they can make, uh, and we have a goal that we want to have uh, have 20% of the people within this tra uh, group trained to go on public transport. So the government can save then something like 220 million per year. Um, but the government still, they won't train these people. So uh, then we yeah, come to the uh, special schools, uh, the care uh, institutes, uh, not, uh, not hospitals, but um they uh, they can train these people but they have uh, they hardly have any budget or uh time uh, to do this um so we have to work uh, together with the especially the governments uh, and uh, these institutes um but also the parents uh, of these uh, kids who have to be trained they also have to uh, be informed that if they they have to let their kids go um, because yeah, they're always being picked up by a taxi and now all of a sudden they have to go by public transport so it's also uh, not all of them but a major part of the parents are also uh, scared to let their kids go um, so this it's a group of uh, stakeholders uh, we have to manage uh, it made the process a bit longer but we are getting them uh, all together and uh, yeah, hopefully uh, some nice results from that. That's good to hear there's good results coming from it. And just uh, finally to close this off, it's quite interesting you mentioned that those, those various stakeholders that are emerging um, using this software. So where to finish us off, where do you see the immersive training learning space in the next couple of years? And then perhaps with your experience working with current and then new stakeholders, what's the future for ChangeFide? Uh, he's the future, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think it's very much still uh, a growing industry. Um, so only for a couple of years, like uh, standalone VR headsets have become uh, a common, common thing, um, which really has made it possible to do these sorts of solutions in the first place. So we, we know that there's still very much... Uh, lacking in content and also uh, lacking in uh, unity so there are here and there some um, some institutes that are really trying to push innovation um, and i think we we all have to you know get together try to take it to the next level to really um, try to get like these multiple stakeholders together we as a uh, the software company have to do that right now, but um, it yeah. So for to to really get it to the next level, it would be logical to uh, maybe set up uh, in, in in larger scale with uh, the government involved, for example. Brilliant, really well said. Right. Thank you so much for your time, guys. That was it from myself. Um, you can get more XR news by subscribing to the XR Today news channel and by following our social pages. I'm Rory Greener. I've been joined by Eric and Tim from GameFight. Thank you very much for watching and thanks so much for joining me today.